You love that car so much you could cry. Car buying is so emotional. You might not have said it, but you were thinking it. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Welcome to The Homework Guy channel, home of YouTube's best information on buying and selling new or used cars, courtesy of The Homework Guy team. People don't make reasonable decisions when it comes to cars. People buy a car based on emotion. Let me give you Jeff as an example. He was a good friend of mine, and he'd show up at the car lot periodically and say, I'm getting the itch. He had money to spend, and just like you, he was back to experience the feel-good emotions, the release of dopamine, that new car smell. Jeff didn't have to justify his decisions to anyone because he had the money to burn, but most of you don't. You show up at the deal lot with a lot of emotions, and then you justify those emotions with what you think is logic. Well, welcome to the phenomena of confirmation bias. Once you have your emotions evolved, there's always enough information available to help make that emotional decision seem like the right thing for you, no matter how much of a disaster it really is. And then you forget everything that you learned here on the Homework Guy channel. You drive away quietly knowing that you got hosed, but you're telling yourself, I saved X dollars on that car deal. And you wave off those little voices that keep saying, You still overpaid for your car. Don't buy all those junk products. Why are you paying for all those fees? Are you done? Nope. Well, okay. Why weren't you thinking? Why didn't you do your due diligence? Why did you just throw caution to the wind? I can tell you why. Emotion. Salesmen train on this stuff. They are so ready for you. Professional trainers come in to teach them skills to get you emotionally ready. So when the numbers are presented to you, some of you actually help the salesman try to find a way that the deal will make sense to you. And some of you do this no matter how bad the numbers are. You deserve this car. It's, it's like winning the lotto. Shut up. Training at a car dealership focuses on the customer who comes in being logical, not emotional and what the salesman has to do to get you unfocused and off track. I have five tips to become a wise customer, keep control of your emotions, and by using logic instead of emotions. You can save thousands doing that. Before we do that, here's a quick word from the Homework Guy team. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is, there's no charge. You can also email the team at info at thehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. The thing the salesman knows is that you're at the dealership for a reason. You're trying to buy your way out of a problem or into a problem whatever that problem may be, the salesman will use every angle possible to find that problem and get your money. Their job is to sell you, and selling means that they have to find your heartstrings. A skilled salesman will ask enough questions to unmask the problem you're trying to solve, and then unmask the emotion that you're hiding that's connected to it. And the moment they do, you start helping them justify your decision. And the more problems you spill out, the more solutions to those problems you're going to see in that dreaded finance office. Now, how do they do this? One of the key strategies is storytelling, attaching a story to everything. Stories distract you from your goal. They stir up emotions, and soon you start thinking about your stories too. Then not to be outdone, you start sharing, and you become emotional pals. At that point, you go from, I need that, to, I need that. See how that works? Here are a few things you should consider before finalizing your car deal. Number one, sleep on it before making a significant purchase. You've already been waiting for weeks, possibly even months. One more night won't hurt one stinking bit. Let the emotions come down before finalizing your car purchase. Sleep on it. Just like a bad date after a night at the bar, you wake up with a whole new perspective on the decisions you were making hours before. Now you're saying, what was I thinking? I told you you should have been listening. He doesn't ever shut up. You save thousands of dollars just because of one night's rest. Number two, carefully think through your reason for buying. You know, you've been dreaming of owning this car since you were a kid or maybe ever since you made your last bad car buying decision. 
You think that this purchase will make you happy or impress your friends, but you're wrong. That's the wrong motive altogether to be buying a car with. You're not thinking through your buying decisions. You're thinking emotionally instead of logically about the car deal. I want it is not a logical reason to buy a car. Oh, man. Number three, seek the counsel of your spouse, a friend, family member, or someone you trust. Talk through any doubt you're feeling about the situation before your money parts your wallet, not after. There you go again with all that logic stuff. Number four, never buy something that you can't explain to someone else. You've probably heard the statement, never invest in something you don't understand. Well, this applies to purchases too. If you don't understand something, you don't know how it will affect various parts of your life. I like how it looks, or it sure is zippy, is not understanding the car purchase you're about to make. And number five, consider the opportunity cost of your money. Every time you make a choice, there's a certain value you place on that choice. Whether you know it or not, the opportunity cost is what you gave up to get the car, that add-on or that extended warranty or any service or the so-called peace of mind the finance man's going to talk to you about. In this case, the opportunity cost of getting those things is the money you lost to get them. Think about the idea of opportunity cost. If I spend money on this, then I can't spend money on something else. Seriously, if you've never heard of Dave Ramsey's show, watch a couple before you go car shopping again and you'll have a whole new respect for the money that's in your pocket and your ability to use your own brains. All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and do me a favor, would you? Use hashtag the homework guy in your comments. Share the video on social media with your friends. And if you've watched the videos on this channel, let us know what you've learned. How did you apply the techniques to win on your last car deal? And please, if you decide to comment down below with the name that you gave your car, this whole video just went vroom, right over the top of your head. For those of you who like to say thanks for the tip, I'll leave the links that you see here for PayPal and the Cash App in the description box down below. I've helped millions of car buyers with free advice and contract reviews and much more, and we're not going anywhere. If you got a smoking hot deal recently, could you also share those details in the comment section down below so that others can benefit from your great experience? By sharing your shopping stories, you're adding to the super high intensity training everyone gets by visiting the Homework Guy channel. We've blown right past 200,000 subscribers now, so thank you every one of you for helping us get there. Here's the other thing. I'm going to put our Facebook link here for you as well. If you go to the page, the Facebook page, like the homework guy, all of our uploads will be there for you. Thanks in advance for doing this. You guys rock. I got to go now because this is making me so emotional. You guys are so nice. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just too logical for that. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time. Take care, everyone.